Hey everybody! Welcome to the Horror Appraisal. I'm Sam. I'm Evan. Welcome back. It's Good been a to while, see you right? Guys. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long time since we've been able to do this. It was uh, it was December, January. It was, it was right after Christmas last time we were able to make one of these together. We had the flu because we were talking about we did autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah, yeah. What wow. are we talking about now? We are going to talk about a really really cool film that came out. A few years ago, uh, but you know what? We decided we wanted to watch it for fun again. We'd seen it five, about five years ago or so when it first came out, maybe a little longer. Hobo with a Shotgun, starring Rutger Hauer. What else has Rutger Hauer been in? Oh, gee, nothing big. Uh, Blade Runner, but you know. The Hitcher? Um, yeah, The Hitcher. Uh, 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 split Second. Blind Fury. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, this is just this really cool fun movie and it's directed by a guy named Jason Eisner and uh, it's just this really cool kind of genre movie it's kind of a revenge movie it's with tons of guts and gore I'd have to say one of the most amazing things about this movie is the non-stop effects yeah absolutely it's got absolutely incredible practical special effects uh, you know <laughs> incredibly uber violent um, you know you start off with a big death. Like, uh, the, the thing is, the sewer lid, like, uh, I know I'm not really spoiling this for anybody, probably. I mean, yeah, like, it's the movie's six years old. It's okay. The, they, they have this big thing uh, where it's called Fuck Town, and they essentially <laughs> take, uh, they, they punish people by taking a sewer lid that's cut into two cut into halves with the, with the hole cut out like a head. collar making it like a and collar and they put it around the person's head and they drop them into the, the sewer drain and they're hanging there by their neck which would kill most people Yeah. but then they take a barbed wire noose mm -hmm. and then they put it around their neck and then they tie it to a vehicle and rip their head off they make it rain you know this this movie there's some things I really like about it I like the beginning of the film because it really uh, it really kind of like builds on the Kind of the genre that it is, which is kind of like a revenge film. Like it's, it, it reminds you, you very much of a spaghetti western, like the '70s style horror yeah. too. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's very, it reminds you very much of a spaghetti western, like with the music at the beginning. Richter Hauer's character is riding in on the rails with this awesome, like uh, very lush score going on. You know what that score uh, reminds me of? What? Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, I can see that. You know, many people paid homage to that recently. I, I actually thought a lot of uh, Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill films. Um, yeah, Tarantino it was seemed to be a big inspiration yeah. for this. Well, one thing that one you know thing that I really liked about it, like I said, it feels like kind of a. I love spaghetti westerns, so it kind of feels like. And think about it, this guy comes in, and the town is owned by this dude and his sons, and they terrorize everybody, and they basically own the town. And then it's up to this guy to come in and just bring justice to the place. So you have a main guy that runs this town, but his enforcers are his sons. Yeah. The, the guy's played by an actor, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the guy's played by an actor named Brian Downey. He's not that well known, but he was in a show that I really liked it's in really high school. Awesome. He was in a show called Lex. It was a really cool sci-fi show. And, and honestly, he's really over the top and just absolutely great in this role. He's the Drake. The Drake. Mm -hmm. And his sons, uh, mm -hmm. they remind me of Tom Cruise and Stifler. Yeah, they're really super <laughs> obnoxious people. They are terrible. And they, they murder people and just hurt people in the most awful way. Like, you basically see one of the coolest kind of sequences you see is it, it takes place in an arcade. A uh, person gets their <laughs> their hand, their foot smashed, their bare foot smashed, gets their arm broken around a joystick, and then they get smashed into cocaine or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's... You know, people get killed. They're, they're, there's a head that gets smashed between two bumper cars. Like that was awesome. I actually yeah. really like that because I didn't. I remember when, when I first saw that. I wasn't ready for like how impactful that was going to be. Yeah. Uh, essentially, Rugger Howard is trying to be uh, something and sees a lawnmower in in the, the pawn yeah. shop and he decides that he's going to save up 49.99 which leads him <laughs> to go to one of those bum fight videos and eat glass and he raises the money yeah because he's so desperate yeah um, he's, he's yeah he's gonna he's gonna do a lawn care uh, a lawn mowing business he's gonna better himself in that way 
But danger finds him. He's in the pawn shop, and everything goes kind of crazy. Kaput. And, and he just decides, I'm going to grab this shotgun, and I'm going to kill him. Yeah, and that's kind of like, yeah, that's way. Kind of like his he origin. Like, it's like he his character has an awakening of what a cesspool and mire of crap humanity in this place is in. So he just basically starts stealing out vigilante justice. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's gruesome, yeah. You know, uh, what's one thing that we really like about this film? Of course, it's quirkiness. It's non-stop. Uh, it, this movie is not a boring movie It doesn't forget anything. No. I want you to talk about the plague a little bit. Okay, so the plague. Um, essentially, when all else fails... Yeah. Uh, when you absolutely have to get someone killed. The plague. It's these guys that you don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. They are wearing metal armor. Yeah. And they, the metal armor is stylized to be very... Um, almost looks like a robot, but it's just yeah. You don't know if it's very a automaton, yeah, especially like that one, the shorter one. Yeah, it's like it's got like a ro it reminds me of like the head of like Robbie the robot, even though it's kind of like just kind of like a a, a modified like welder's helmet. They they but, speak kind of robotically. Yeah, uh, like they've got some kind of voice changer on them, but you don't know if it's a human under that mask or what. Like no, it's like, that's, but, that's the mystery. Uh, but if you if you kill one of them, you become one of them. So I don't know if they like do something to you. But there's a scene that shows them wrangling like an octopus monster kind of, yeah. like, which is really they funny. have like a kraken or something in the basement. But the their their trademark their their kinda calling like, card kind of like the monsters had like that dragon in the basement. <laughs> they like to go up behind people and they take a blade and like hack them in the back of the leg and then they put a noose around their neck and then pop they shoot like the the end of the rope up like into a the spear ceiling. gun yeah yeah they shoot it up in the ceiling they hang everyone that's like their calling card and it's, it's very uh lots of people they do yeah, this to very and, effective and then they, they haul their person away in a coffin and then mm -hmm. take them to their lair and they which is which which is kind of interesting because you see all these you see like their their uh, list of marks on the wall, like all these people through history, like you see, like Abraham Lincoln and <laughs> Joan of Arc and other people. So you know, uh, you don't really know like who these beings are. You know, maybe the, the the plague has existed. You know, obviously throughout all these times and ages, but they just they change people so often. So they have a very dark legacy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one of my favorite things about Hobo with a Shotgun yeah. is the absolute ludicrousy of it. Um, it is. Uh, uh, because Rugger Hauer meets this girl. She's a prostitute. That's mm -hmm. her only way of really surviving in this town. Mm -hmm. But when he meets her, she falls for him as, as like a friend character. Sure. Maybe a, maybe a father. Uh, and immediately kind of is drawn to him. And eventually, after he really he saves her life from a crooked cop, she invites him essentially to join her and go do what he wants. And go open a grass cutting business. I mean, she's just so tired of, of everything it's too. It's crazy. Like anything sounds better than staying there. W one thing that it's I, I found mind crazy. One one thing that I think is interesting about their relationship, uh, you know, you think of a film like Hobo with a Shotgun, and you know, you don't necessarily think of like great pieces of literature and art, but. You know, it, it, that's for the snooty crowd. But I, I thought of his relationship with her and how he really seemed... She's a prostitute, okay? But in his mind, he... He blocks that. He, he blocks that. He Exactly. He blocks it. He sees something else. He elevates her. And him helping her is like kind of like something to make himself better. It's, it's exactly like uh, Miguel Cervantes wrote Don Quixote about this guy who thought he was a knight. And there's this prostitute he meets but in his mind he completely blocks that and you know she becomes this gorgeous woman of his dreams that he fights for she's pure and virtuous when in all reality she's a prostitute don't you dare talk to her like that yeah she's a teacher yeah and so it blows people's brains I, I just thought it was i just think that's really kind of cool and interesting you know it's it's a uh, it's, it's kind of sad too i also, this movie is controversial, I would imagine, because there is there is a gun, there's a baby held at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a school bus fire in which uh, lots maybe, of children die. Maybe in this movie. ten to fifteen children die. Yeah. Uh, we target the homeless, which is another taboo. And yeah. uh, like there, there's a one really kind of fun kill where we a person crawls into one of their 
bum houses and uh, a uh, piece of construction equipment crushes them into blood. Blood! Yeah, it's, it's like it's like there was... They spared no expense with blood. In this there movie. was so much blood that just spurred it out of there. So, you know, I, I just think that all in all, if you enjoy... You have to watch Hobo with a shotgun with a certain expectation. First of all, I think they tried to prepare you for that because they named the film Hobo with a Shotgun. Um, you know what you're in for. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you really should. If, if you go into a movie like that, you're thinking, well, that wasn't, you know the king speech or something like that well you went and saw a film called hobo with a shot then you need to know what your expectations are that doesn't mean they're lower <laughs> that does not mean this is not a good film uh i just think people don't understand how to view films like this sometimes because they are intentionally made a certain way uh they, they follow a certain style uh, the, the dialogue in this film is is nuts it's really genius it's, though. It's, uh, yeah i, I agree it really with you. is like yeah. you you think of every horrible but very violent one-liner you can imagine and one character is spewing them out one after the other. Like, you think of every horrible thing you can say and one character would <clears throat> spit it out consecutively. It's not even that so much for me and I'm having a hard time thinking of a concrete example. If you watch the film Hobo with a Shotgun, Rutger Hauer especially, some of the things he says, you get his meaning from it, but also you think to your, I, I this is me anyway. This is my, I thought to myself, no one would say that that way. Like he can, it's, he it's, can base it's, things very emotional, like vis, vi, visual. Very, well, you know, I mean, he's. He, I, I don't know if it's because you know, of course, you know, the man's been. I don't know. The man's been uh, fluent in English, you know, most of his life, uh, even though he's not a Native American. Um, but uh, I can't remember if Rutger Howard's Swedish or Danish or Dutch. He's something like that. But. Uh, but you know, he's I, a bagel. He's he's awesome. <laughs> I mean, Rooker Hauer looked so grizzled in this. You can smell him. Yeah. When you watch this. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. But that's all I've got. I mean, the way Rooker Hauer acts in this, he conveys things very visually with his face. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh he, yeah, I totally agree. Like, you can tell, like, just like the way he moves his mouth is very characteristic. His, his eyes close and he moves his cheeks. He moves every part of his face. To, to communicate mm -hmm. uh, whatever he's feeling. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, great, great performer as always. I mean, I would suggest checking it out. Yeah. Absolutely. If you guys have never seen or heard of Hobo with a Shotgun, it's quite easily available. I, it, it's way up there. You know, be forewarned, it's a very violent Gore fest. <laughs> it is very but, violent. Yeah, I mean that's that's the, that's what this movie is. It, we, this one's not a stop your head and and, and think about it kind of thing. This is this something is, we were gonna do is, is talk about the revenge aspect of this, and we, oh. we 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 love the movie Exterminator. Yes, exactly. Because it involves the punishment of pedophiles and the punishment of sexual deviants and people trash that, people people that should not be alive. Yeah, the same same kind of there. We we were drawing a lot of parallels between Hobo with a Shotgun. An exterminator because we watched them both tonight. <laughs> yeah, because it's about a guy. And it was kind of weird. It's, it's it's about a guy that comes in and tries to clean everything up. Burn, baby, burn. Also, it was really <laughs> weird because both films that we watched uh, had the song "Disco Inferno" in it. I was like, isn't it kind of weird that we're watching two revenge films, like kind of like back to back vigilante films, back to back, and they both have "Disco Inferno" in it. So. Yeah, and after extremely significant scenes, uh, I mean, Exterminator is a much lesser quality as far as what it has available to it to mm -hmm. spend on prosthetics and such. And Hobo with a shotgun is like, yeah, we're gonna make all kinds of silicone props and we're yeah. gonna like destroy people essentially. Hobo with a shotgun is an overload. But I, film I, I, for I, me. I, I think the Exterminator <laughs> like does a good job of giving you kind of somebody you don't expect, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he's a very deadly like viper. He, he's in the weeds, he's in the grass, and mm -hmm. he's he's ready to strike and kill people. Yeah, um, and he he kills people viciously like. Uh, pedophiles he does not take lightly he takes one guy and he sucks him in lighter fluid and lights him on fire yeah, that and was pretty cool he, he takes bullets and drills them out and then he puts mercury in them and seals them up with lead don't know exactly what that does but it's supposed to kind of explode and kind of make a more of a really bad wound cavity and stuff but that's yeah. his primary kind of thing but it, was, it was kind of a weird movie but at, at the same time it was still kind of cool if you like Re revenge films check out the exterminator yeah it's a must that, that's probably how much we'll touch on it we, we had thought about doing a full review on it but i would say 
just check out the exterminator yeah but definitely check out hobo with a shotgun if you haven't already because we are back we have a confession we talked about this. Okay. Probably not going to do the top five of each 70s oh, year. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, because we Might as well get that out now. We determined that to do like the first three or four or five years of the 70s, we were not going to be able to really do that because we'd have to buy a lot of films that just aren't available. Uh, there are, you know, look at 1970. Unless we, the only problem is that we would, we would make it like, so much of it would be a hammer fest. We might as well just call it ha- you know, the video's hammer fest. Wait, well, you know, and there's not even that many like that. hammer films. Like, there's, yeah. there, were, there were like five, but if you want to be truly informed, you want more than five films. You can't just, you can't just watch five movies and be like, oh, yeah, these are the top five movies for 1970. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be really informed. And so we're going to do other stuff. We're going to go back to maybe doing some reviews like, like we did tonight with Hobo with a Shotgun. Yeah. Just kind of giving you information on movies. Singles, uh, I, I feel completely confident in saying we could go ahead and do the 90s. We, I know we voted on it. You guys voted for the 70s, but we can do the 90s. I think the 90s have some, have some things to offer, yeah. like the, the, the top fives for each 90s year. If you guys want to see that, let us know. Yeah, absolutely, or any other suggestions. But, you know, Sam's been really busy working. On a movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, called 12 Pole. If you would like to see what that's all about, Search twelve pole trailer and you won't have to look very far. I was I was uh, I was in he's, part of it. He's in the movie. Yeah. He plays a very significant. Part. <laughs> yeah, I'm dog catcher number two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's it. it uh, Sam's been working very hard on it. I saw the fr- a rough cut of the first twenty three twenty four minutes tonight, and I'm very impressed by everything he's done, and everything the people working with him have done. So it, it looks great. It's been uh, six, seven months of very, very hard work. It's really why we haven't put out a lot of videos for you guys. Uh, time has just not been very... You know, we, we have tried to communicate that that's been going on. It's tough to get together and do a video. Um, mm-hmm. You might notice that this thing this thing looks a little different than usual. And it's mm-hmm. because I've learned a few tricks. Uh, we've got lighting here. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's blinding. It's kind of like... It kind of like... is there, Yeah, because it's just like... It kind of like reminds me of like the Suspiria lighting. Like I've got like yellow, lavender, like aquamarine or whatever the heck that is. But there's no red. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll have a review where we have red. Just red. <laughs> Just red. It'll look like a whorehouse. <clears throat> all right. So I mean, that's probably all we got to say. Hobo with a Shotgun is a violent fuck fest that you want to see. It's a horribly like very abrasive film. That's Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah, beautifully shot. I, I would just a single. It has awesome lighting. It does. Speaking actually. of the seventies, it does. It looks like a argent. It looks like an argent. There, there are scenes where certain buildings are lit. Yeah, the way certain buildings are like. Remember the where the plague are like. They're it's an like, entirely it's like purple pink. light. It's like pink or purple with like blue, contrasting a little bit. Like it's like from beyond, man. Yeah, it's really cool. You're watching something with this film that like they <clears throat> they love their oranges and blues. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they was they split people's faces with the lighting. They've got like blue here and then they've got all orange here. Yeah. And they've got entire scenes that are just washed in red and then other scenes that are washed in blue. It's mm-hmm. totally artistic. Check it out. Yeah. Well, guys, have a great one. We'll be back with you soon. I'm Evan. I'm Sam. You guys have a great 4th of July. Uh yeah, don't blow your hand off with an M80. Uh, don't put any uh, bottle rockets up frogs' butts. Ribbit. Uh, and enjoy yourselves. Bye. See you later. <laughs>